morning. I'm really glad to be here, and they make me feel very welcome because a few hours ago I said to my wife, you know, I had a stroke a little while ago. I mm -hmm. said, no, I, I don't think I will be able to talk. And she said, honey, you're all right. You're just temporarily out of order. <laughs> I think you're better than that. <laughs> well, you know, uh -huh. you know, when I first had my stroke, mm -hmm. I could only babble. And then I worked with a speech therapist. And then I got to talk about as good as my three-year-old granddaughter. <laughs> Please, Kelsey. Uh huh. But one that day, I said to Kelsey, my granddaughter, I said, Kelsey, say transcontinental. And she couldn't say it. Yay! <laughs> you, showed you showed her, all right. <laughs> I, left her, I left her in the dust. <laughs> now I speak like a six year old. <laughs> You look fantastic, too, I gotta say. Thank you, I, thank you. It's stunning to see you. I've never met you before, and uh, I saw you out in the hallway. It's just, it's, it's Kirk Douglas. It's yes. a stunning thing. We, uh, we, you probably maybe saw at the top of the show, uh, we don't get the, to meet many people like you. It's a real treat. Yes. It really is. Yes, <laughs> but, just... and let me tell you, one of the ads I said, is that for me, that, uh, that, that ad for impressing the Grim Reaper. No! <laughs> no! That is not for you. <laughs> Definitely not, no. Uh, and uh, I want... <laughs> I didn't think people really watched the show back there in the green room. Most of the time I go back in the green room, they're watching something else. <laughs> not you that know, I blame them. Another thing, when I... See, when you have a stroke, you must speak slowly to be understood. And I find that when I speak slowly, people listen. I gotta they, try that, they yeah. Think I, they think I'm going to say something important. <laughs> then you just order a cheeseburger. That's, right. <laughs> That's it. That's right. I just wanted a cheeseburger. But you know, when I, when I get excited, I can't speak well, and sometimes I will talk to Michael, and he says, what that, what that? I said, Michael, don't you speak English? <laughs> <laughs> He's got to listen, that kid. Exactly. Speaking of, speaking of your son, Michael, his movie, uh, The Game, was number one uh, yes. this weekend. Uh, you must be very proud of him. Uh, the Game is a wonderful movie, mm -hmm. believe me, and he's so good at, in it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I knew he was going to be so famous, I would have been not much nicer to him when he was young. <laughs> he, uh, he didn't have an agent then. He was just a kid. Yeah. He didn't, you, are you going to make a movie, uh, do you think? With, yes, uh... we are talking about making a movie. As a matter of fact, we have never worked together, Mike and I. And then, before I had my stroke, we were working on the script. And then I had my stroke, and he said, well, Dad, listen, you just work with a speech therapist, and then we'll make the movie. So I said, Michael, why don't you work with my speech therapist? <laughs> and then I said, Michael, when you talk like I talk, we'll make the movie. <laughs> that plan. It's a better plan all around. But, but you know, but seriously, I'm so proud of Michael. Mm -hmm. And have any of you seen the, seen the, the game? Yeah! It's really a wonderful movie, and I think that Michael is really terrific in Are you it. able to look at him completely as an actor, or is there always part of you that's just from, you know, that, that, that has that fatherly pride? Well, I always have the fatherly pride mm -hmm. in him mm -hmm. because I think he's a much better actor than I am, and I thought I was a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> no, really? You think he's a better actor than you? No. Yes, I think so. No. I think so. <laughs> uh, he's uh, good, but no. 
I was afraid he was going to agree with me. <laughs> yeah. Then you would have punched me out, I think. You're, uh, I wanted to ask you, um, I, it's, it, it's a funny story. I was, I was reading in, uh, in your book, Climbing the Mountain. It's a, it's a, you're making the movie Oscar with Sylvester Stallone. Oh, yes. And, and, and it's a very funny story where it's a very physical scene you had well, with him. I, well, think, yeah. I think you're playing his father, isn't that correct? Well, you know, I never read the script. And they had, they said, really, they you said... You said Stallone's in it. I'm not going to read the script. No, they know. said, they said, Kirk, will you play a cameo? I said, no. Well, they said, just read it. It, it, it. it takes place before the title. So I read the first five pages, and I said, I will play it, because mm -hmm. I played a dying father, and he is my son, but he is a gangster. So he came, comes in, and I keep slapping in the, in the face. And I tell you, I had such a wonderful time slapping <laughs> 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 Well, was, was, he, uh, was he okay with that, being no, slapped well, around so it, much? It, it, after a while, he said, let's, let's stop it. I'm getting brain crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a good guy. Yeah. He's a good, he's a good guy. I, uh, I wanted to ask you about, um, about your sons, because we, we touched on, on them briefly. But in, in the book, you talk about the fact that your sons started to criticize the way you were dressing. They wanted you to dress more Gen X. Is that, is that the case? You know, I tell you, my son, sometimes I want... <laughs> they said, Dad, you dress... You, look at what they say. You dress like your clothes come from a, a geriatric, geriatric workshop. <laughs> and they, oh, God, really? So you, they, they brought me to the store, and they made me put on, the, on, on clothes, shoes. I tell you, I hated it. I hated it. You had never worn shoes before. Yeah. <laughs> no, but they made you dress in the book you're talking about. It's all that kind of really loose fitting, yes, you know, the baggy pants. Exactly. They dress you baggy like a rapper. Pants yeah. like you have, baggy, baggy pants like you have, a, a, have an accident. That's the way to go. When I was working on my book, I'm on my book mm -hmm. and I would be, be depressed, you know, shows like yours are very important because it's important to laugh, to make a joke, and no matter how bad things are. <laughs> Thank you for that part, yeah. <laughs> I mean, in, I can relate, Kirk. No, no, I mean, in life, <laughs> in life, no. I know what life, I mean. No matter how bad things come, they can always be worse. Mm -hmm. So I, and that's why when I, I think of life as climbing a mountain. Everybody is climbing the mountain, and life is how you climb the mountain, and you must climb in life with a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. So any show that makes you laugh, I think is very, very precious and important. Oh, thank you very much. That's high, high praise indeed. The, uh, the books, as I mentioned before, are Kirk Douglas, Climbing the Mountain and A Broken Mirror, and they're both in bookstores now. And uh, I, I speak for Andy, too. This is, it was a real pleasure and a thrill to meet you. Thank and uh, we hope sometime uh, you come back again and visit us. But, but I will. we can't thank you enough for all the work you've done and, and for being here. Thank you very much. Kirk Douglas, everybody.